Welcome to English Digest, guys. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. It's day two of our exploring Patagonia. It's a region that actually exists in two countries, Chile and Argentina, both. And sometimes people refer to it as the end of the world because it's so far away. Very, very far away. I likely will not ever get there in this lifetime. Are you going to travel there? Do you have any plans、uh, to go? Well, if somebody gives me like、uh, five million dollars and I, I, I don't have to work to support that, my family, is that U.S. Stuff, or NT? Well, U.S. dollars. Maybe British pounds or something would be better. I don't <laughs> know, but、uh, yeah, indeed, if I've got the time and the money, sure, I'll go anywhere I want to go. But、uh, there are realities in life. And I think even the most adventurous travelers don't get to every corner of the world. So feel fortunate if you ever get down to Patagonia. Maybe it's your kind of place. Who knows?、Mm. But as we described it, we said it was kind of stark. There, it's got this stark beauty. It's kind of a barren place. And there are these、uh, Welsh people living there, descendants of some Welsh colonists who moved there a couple hundred years ago. And、uh, I guess the、uh, De Welche people might still be there. They've been there for thousands of years. Yeah, we're going to get started by doing what we always do, and that's reading through today's lesson. Stay tuned. With such varied geography, it shouldn't come as a surprise that fascinating sites are plentiful in Patagonia. At Argentinian Patagonia's La Cueva de las Manos, or the Cave of Hands, some of the world's oldest art can be found. Though reaching the cave can be difficult, the journey is worth it. Thousands of years ago, early inhabitants stenciled their handprints on the cave's wall with colorful minerals. Early drawings of humans and animals can be seen there as well. Located on the Chilean side of General Carrera Lake, which is shared by both countries, is the Marble Cathedral. The glacier-fed lake has been eroding its surrounding cliffs for millennia. This process has carved out stunning caves, and the minerals in the water have turned their walls bright blue. When the water reflects sunlight onto them, they seem to glow with a vivid blue light. At the same time. Cypress trees growing nearby release a sweet scent into the air, creating an experience nothing short of magical. Patagonia is also home to rare wildlife. Charles Darwin visited the area in the 1830s, seeking out an ostrich-like bird known as the rhea. He hoped to catalog the bird and bring a specimen back to Europe. Once, after a disappointing day of searching. He sat down to dinner only to realize that the meat he'd bitten into was from the very bird he'd been pursuing. He quickly put a stop to the meal until he could collect enough of the bird to compose a proper specimen. Of course, tales like this are only the tip of the iceberg in Patagonia. Perhaps if you're lucky, you'll get to explore this spectacular region yourself someday. Let's get started, guys. We're talking about Patagonia, a region that is in both Chile and Argentina, and it's got varied geography. Geography is the study of the Earth, especially the physical features of the Earth. You know where the lakes and rivers are, where the mountains are. It has nothing to do with what people built. It's only natural, and what is part of. You know the land and the area, and it includes water too. Geography is a class you could take in school. Although I never took a geography class, we would have my homeroom teacher, especially in、uh, junior high, would focus on countries for a while. But、uh, someone who really is good with geography is Tom. He loves that stuff. Well, here it says it shouldn't come as a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise. That there are really fascinating sites or areas in Patagonia. We're describing them as being plentiful. Plentiful means there are lots of them. You're not going to run out of them、uh, the first day that you're there if you're a traveler to the Patagonia area or region. So plentiful just means a lot of exists. A lot of these things exist in great quantities. They're abundant. You could also say you're not going to run out of them. 
Indeed. So yes, indeed, you can expect to see all sorts of interesting things there. Fascinating sights are、mm. all over the place. They are numerous. They are plentiful in Patagonia. You could spend years there and not see everything. At Argentinian Patagonia's La Cueva de las Manos, or the Cave of Hands, some of the world's oldest art can be found. So again, as we mentioned before, Patagonia covers two different countries, or it's in two different countries,、mm -hmm. Chile and Argentina. So if you're in Argentina, which is further to the east, you might go to a cave, which is called in Spanish La Cueva de las Manos, or the Cave of Hands. That's what that means here. Cueva means cave, mano means hand. So Cueva de las Manos, cave of hands. And if you go in that cave, you can see some of the world's oldest art, perhaps painted on the walls. If you're into that sort of thing, and though reaching the cave can be difficult, the journey is worth it. So though, even though it's true that getting to the cave can be difficult, you probably have to spend lots of time traveling there by bus and maybe by small jeep or something on bumpy roads, and then you have to hike for a long. Time, and you have to pay tour guides to take you there and stuff like that. So, indeed, even though it's true that it can be difficult to get there, it's worth it. You'll be、mm. glad you went. Yeah, sometimes when it's harder to get someplace, fewer people are there. That's a good thing,、mm. and usually a great payoff. Payoff just means you put a lot of effort into something. And the result was great. It was worth it. So yeah, you might want to check that out. Caves are fun. I know some people don't like to go into caves because there's no light inside. You have to take a, you know, a flashlight with you. Sometimes they can be cold too. So,、uh, yeah, caves are those large underground holes in the earth. I tend to like to go into them. I think they're fun. There are a lot of caves in Utah. One in Arizona, and so growing up, we would always go and visit those caves. My family loves those. Getting there is tough, as Tom said, but、uh, it's worth it. Thousands of years ago, these early inhabitants inhabited is someone who lives in that place. So early just means long, long ago. They would stencil their handprints on the cave's wall with colorful minerals. They didn't have paint. Sounds like they were just using minerals that come naturally from the earth, like zinc. Zinc's a natural mineral. Bodies need some minerals, as you know, to stay healthy, like magnesium, calcium, zinc. Those are all minerals. And they found early drawings of humans and animals inside these this cave, which is kind of cool to check out. Today, you'll often see people stenciling. T-shirts、mm. with you know a phrase or their favorite musical artist, something that they want to put on a T-shirt. So somehow they put the image of their hands or handprints on the wall of the cave. That's what a handprint is. What is left over after you touch something with your hand, or you have got footprints too. If you're trying to find somebody, you look for their footprints, and then you can hunt them down or something like that. And so yes, you could see the handprints on the wall of the cave, and they did this with colorful minerals. Of course, as you know, lots of colors for cloth and stuff come from various minerals. And plants and stuff like that, and、uh, early drawings of humans and animals can be seen there as well. So I'm sure those walls have been studied extensively by scientists and anthropologists、mm. and all sorts of people. And they're trying to figure out, hey, what kind of animals lived in that area? What were the people like, etc. So if you go in that cave, you can imagine, gee, someone put their hand up to this wall eight thousand years ago. That's got to be pretty fascinating to experience. Now let's、uh, go to the Chilean side, or excuse me, the Chilean side of Patagonia. That would be going to the west here, over the Andes Mountains. And you've got General Carrera Lake, which is shared by both countries. At that place, there is the Marble Cathedral. A cathedral is like a a really big church, especially in the Catholic religion. Yeah, it is. It's huge. So this is a glacier-fed lake. So where is the water for the lake coming from? Sometimes water for a lake is coming from a small stream in the mountains. This one is being fed, or the water that keeps that lake supplied and full is coming from a glacier as it melts. It kind of, you know, feeds right into the lake, and this has been eroding its surrounding cliffs. 
for thousands and thousands of years. So let's look at this. A road. What does a road mean? To a road means to wear away. After a long time, could be eroded by wind, water, could be eroded by anything that's kind of natural. For example, we have that great rock called the Queen's Head,、yeah. and wind and the ocean waves have eroded that over the years. It's changed. It's getting very, very delicate. One of these days, someone's going to touch it, and it's going to fall over. I think they've put a rope around it, though. You、mm. can't go up and and touch and climb on it like you you could when you were a kid. We got to protect it, though. So to erode just means to wear something away, but it's often over. Lots and lots of years, and here we're talking about thousands of years. Cliffs. What's a cliff? Well, it's that very steep part of a mountain. Usually, it's a rock face too, and it's usually near the edge of the sea. There's a beautiful region or area in England called the beautiful Cliffs of Dover.、Uh, it's right at the edge of the ocean, and it's quite beautiful. I haven't seen it yet, but I plan to go someday. Just look online; you can see what I mean. It's gorgeous. Well, these are cliffs that are being eroded. Millennia is the plural form of the word millennium. Millennium means a thousand years. So, if you use the plural form, you're talking about thousands of years. Right, so this lake、uh, has water coming in from a glacier, and you've got these cliffs, and they've been eroded by wind and water for thousands of years. And I guess you could say the same thing about Taroko Gorge. Yeah,、uh, the water there has been eroding the marble cliffs of Taroko Gorge for millennia. I would probably say even millions of years. But、uh, that's another subject. Of course, we'd love to talk about Taroko, but we're talking about、uh, Patagonia today, and we'll be right back to continue our lesson about Patagonia in just a moment. Hello, my name is Shelby. 今天要继续看 Patagonia 一些特殊景点。在第一段的第一句 ，with such varied geography, it shouldn't come as a surprise that fascinating sites are plentiful in Patagonia. 因为有着如此多样化的地形 ，Patagonia 迷人的景点非常丰富，并不足为奇。With 片语伴随着某种情况，形容主要的句子 ，varied 形容词多样的 ，that 后面的子句才是真正的主词。前面 it 是虚主词，代替 that 的子句。Come as a surprise 表示出人意料。Surprise 本身是惊讶、突然袭击的意思。有时候会看到 a 省略，改成 no。Come as no surprise， 那语义当然就变成不足为奇。第二段说明位在湖边的一间大理石教堂。第二句的地方 ，The glacier fed lake。Has been eroding his surrounding cliffs for millennia. 几千年以来，冰河融化形成的湖不断侵蚀周遭的悬崖。Has been eroding， 现在完成进行式，表示从以前到现在，甚至延续到未来，都一直进行。Eroded， 侵蚀。Wind erodes the statues. 风侵蚀了雕像。顺便看 glacier fed。Fed 是 feed 喂食的过去分词，湖不断被冰河侵蚀，所以用名词加过去分词，形成了一个复合形容词来形容湖泊。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, we shall now continue with our lesson. Again, we're in Patagonia, and more specifically, we're in Chile, or the Chilean side of、uh, General Carrera Lake. I guess this lake is both in Argentina and Chile, so we're in the Chilean side. And of course, we've got the Marble Cathedral. That's a lake that's been eroded. Or has been eroding the surrounding cliffs, and of course you can expect some stark, spectacular scenery there. Well, this process of erosion、mm-hmm. has carved out st- 
stunning caves, and the minerals in the water have turned their walls bright blue. That's going to be quite something to see as well. So if you carve something, that means you take a tool and you kind of move pieces of that material away. Of course,、uh, here in Taiwan, you've got people carving wood sculptures down in Miaoli in various places, and you can buy those、uh, statues of the Buddha, for example.、Mm -hmm. They are carved out of wood. Yeah, they're quite lovely. The process usually takes a long time. Well, this is a process that is in nature, not people. So the erosion has taken place over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, and this process has carved out、uh, stunning caves, and the minerals in the water have turned their walls bright blue. That sounds like a really pretty place to go visit. So that's why going to that cave would be worth the effort. That's what they're telling us. Now, when the water reflects sunlight onto them, they seem to glow with a vivid blue light. So that would be really cool. Kind of look like maybe somebody plugged in that area, and it just is, you know. Glowing like it sometimes can. Now, at the same time, we've got some cypress trees. We have cypress trees here, and they're growing nearby, and they're releasing a sweet scent into the air. There are some wonderful trees that just have a lovely fragrance. There's that smell that you get off the tree. Love that, and it's creating an experience nothing short of. Magical. To be nothing short of means whatever word follows this phrase, guys, means that thing is exactly that. It's magical. So you could just say creating a magical experience or creating an experience that's magical. Nothing short of. If you're short of something, remember you lack it. You could be、uh, short of cash, short of patience. You're gonna yell at someone because you're short of patience. But if you're nothing short of something, it means you have that thing and you have plenty of it. Well, you could say the baseball player's victory in the game was nothing short of magnificent. It was、uh, so magnificent that he became a hero in the baseball world. For example, okay. So, well, I thought、yeah. you were gonna say nothing short. Of a miracle, because your、I、team was too,、yeah. way behind, and at the end they won. You could, yes,、yeah. indeed. If it was like the、uh, Baltimore Orioles playing against the Yankees or something,、uh -huh. and they won, yeah, that would be nothing short of a miracle. And because, notice, guys.、Yeah. Oh, sorry, Tom.、Hmm. Notice, guys. You can put either a noun after that phrase or an adjective. They both work. They do. Uh huh. Okay, so cypress trees. I wonder if the cypress trees here in Taiwan have a special smell to them as well. I haven't been to Ali Shan in、uh, many years. I should go back there again. But、uh, moving on to the next paragraph here, it says Patagonia is also home to rare. Wildlife. Okay, if you're into that sort of thing, this might be the place for you to go check out wildlife. Again, this is a non-count noun, so please do not add an s to this. Wildlife. Of course, I certainly like the wildlife here in Taiwan with all the birds and stuff. If you're lucky, you might be able to see a Formosan black bear. Hopefully, it won't attack you. Maybe you can see the spotted leopard cat <laughs> or things like that. Those are some examples of wildlife.、Uh -huh. And you've got rare wildlife, wildlife that you just don't see. Every day, I guess you could say that about the Formosan black bear. That would be an example of rare wildlife. Yeah. So Charles Darwin, the famous guy who came up with the theory of evolution, he visited the area back in the 1830s. He was seeking out an ostrich-like bird known as the rhea. Never seen this word before. Never heard of this bird. I had to look it up. Yeah, Rhea. He'd heard about it. He wanted to see it for himself. He was really into wildlife, and he would sketch it. You know, ostrich-like means it kind of looks a little bit like an ostrich. We're familiar with that kind of bird, so we can kind of picture it in our minds. He hoped to catalog the bird. If you catalog something, it means you're a scientist and you want to, you know, note that you found this new kind of wildlife. Be the first one to say, "I discovered this rare kind of wildlife." So catalog it and then share it with other scientists in the world. And he wanted to bring a specimen 
back to Europe. He wanted to catch one, put it in a cage, and bring it home. So if you talk about a specimen, you're talking about an individual animal or plant, maybe a piece of mineral. It could even be something that you use in the hospital that doctors ask of you. Maybe you give them a blood specimen or a blood、uh, or your stool specimen, a little bit of that thing, so they can test it、uh, to see how healthy you are. He wanted to bring back one of these Rhea birds to Europe. Exactly, and、uh, he would give it to, to scientists there to check out and investigate and stuff like that. But he was searching, and I guess he couldn't find it. So once, after a disappointing day of searching, he sat down to dinner, only to realize that the meat he'd bitten into was from the very bird he'd been pursuing. Gee, how could that happen? So it was a disappointing day of searching. He was looking all over. He was searching high and low for a rhea, and he thought, "Well, gee, I can't find it. I'm going to sit down and have something to eat here." And he took a bite of the meat, and then he realized, "Holy cow! This is actually meat from a rhea. It's the very bird. It's that bird that I've been looking for all along. How could I not have noticed?" Kind of crazy. It sounds like he had a chef or someone cooking for him that was a local person who'd lived there forever, and it must be something they enjoy eating there. So he quickly put a stop to the meal, as Tom said. <laughs> holy cow! Holy cow just means ah,、oh, I can't believe this. You could also say holy smoke, holy smokes. I think we say holy smokes, don't we? Holy smokes. These are old phrases that we would say when we were shocked. You know, we're surprised at something. Goodness gracious! Oh my goodness! How is, could that be? This is gross, though, because he he tried to collect what remained of the bird. Maybe the the chef had cut off, you know, his head and feet, and that part was in the kitchen. He tried to get the parts of the poor dead bird put together again or composed. If you compose something. It means you put things together to come up with something new. We compose a work of art. We can compose music.、Uh, we use it especially when we're composing music or poetry. Here he's composing a proper specimen. This is just a really gross picture in my mind that I'm getting. You know. Because the part that he was eating was probably cooked, and the other parts were not cooked. I'm sure were raw, and maybe the chef had thrown them in the garbage. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it's an interesting story, nevertheless, and I'm sure the rhea still exists down there, but it probably comes in different species. So, indeed, if you want to check them out, you should、uh, get yourself a field guide for different birds. And、uh, do it if you're into birding, for example. That might be the place for you, or other kinds of wildlife as well. So here, the final paragraph says, "Of course, tales like this are only the tip of the iceberg in Patagonia. Tales, stories like this. Well, there are lots of them. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Of course, the tip of the iceberg just means, hey, it's just a small sample. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of more stories to tell from Patagonia." Bet there are. So perhaps if you're lucky, you'll get to explore this spectacular region yourself someday. Hopefully, those of you out there who are adventurous travelers will get a chance to go. Right now, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher, who is also quite spectacular. 第二段最后一句 At the same time, cypress trees growing nearby release a sweet scent into the air. Creating an experience nothing short of a magical. 附近的柏树释放出香味，创造出一种美妙的感受。Growing nearby 是将原来的形容词短句 which grow nearby 变成了分词片语来形容 cypress trees。动词 release 除了释放，还有发行、发表的意思。市长发表了一份声明。The mayor released a statement. 逗点之后 ，creating 点点点是分词构句，原来是 which creates 点点点的形容词短句。这里的 which 是指前面整个句子。Nothing short of 简直就是可以放在名词、形容词前面，表示相当。这个聚会简直就是一场灾难。The party. It's nothing short of a disaster.
第三段，生物学家达尔文曾经来这里寻找一种叫做 r e a r 的鸟。在第四句中间，经历了一天失望的搜索之后 ，He sat down to dinner only to realize that the meat he'd bitten into was from the very bird he'd been pursuing. 他坐下来吃饭，才突然了解，他咬下的肉就是来自他追捕的鸟。Only to realize， 突然发现。Only 放在不定词前面，常常表示出乎意料。前面可以加逗点，也可以不用加。Bitten into， bitten 是动词 bite 咬的过去分词。吃东西用 bite 这个字，后面可以加 into 或者不加。他吃苹果 ，He bites into the apples， 或者 He bites the apples。这个句子中间还有一个名词词组 ，the very bird。very 这个字如果放在名词前面，是用来强调表示正是、恰好是，所以前面也会放个 the 来限定。你正是那个适合这工作的人。You are the very person for this job. 第三段最后一句的后半段 ，until he could collect enough of the bird to compose a proper specimen， 达尔文收集鸟的部位来组成适当的标本。compose 组成 ，specimen 标本。compose 当组成使用，一般也可以写成 be composed of。空气由氮气和氧气组成。air is composed of。Nitrogen and oxygen. Compose 还有作曲、镇定的意思。有人情绪很激动的时候，就可以跟他说 ，Hey, compose yourself. 镇定，镇定。最后一段的第一句，当然像这样的故事只是 Patagonia 的冰山一角。Of course, tales like this are only the tip of the iceberg in Patagonia. The tip of the iceberg, 惯用语。冰山一角 ，tip 顶端 ，tip 也可以当小费来使用。多义情境题中就常有此用法出现。Tip your server before you leave， 离开之前记得给服务生小费。以上是今天的讲解，谢谢收听。Okay, that's all the time we have to talk about today. So thank you for joining us, and hey, enjoy your travels to Patagonia if you go there sometime during your lifetime. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.